Welcome back. Well, the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, show you the My Reel. So here's the My Reel, which is uh, really intended for students, but you can do a lot with it. It's not just uh, a student device. Uh, you can see that it's got uh, terminals for A to D, D to A converters. Um, it's got an audio in out there, which I've, I'm using and uh, some reset buttons at the bottom. So what this is, is an FPGA device and it's got a dual processor built into it. You can program it in LabVIEW and you can see the details about it on the internet. So what I'm going to be using this for today is I'm going to uh, transmit uh, data from there, from a signal generator, which is here. And I'm going to transmit that, uh, that data uh, using the processor to the uh, this little uh, tablet PC which is a Surface Pro and then from there I'm going to project it onto here so you can see it. This is um, using push to TV. This is one of the new Windows 8.1 uh, options that we can do which is quite interesting. It's pretty new for Windows. So I'm running Windows 8.1 so the first thing I'm going to do to make things clearer is I'm just going to swipe in here and go on devices and then I'm going to go project a second screen oh there it is push to TV and what I should see up here is the screen should appear in a minute just have to be a little bit patient there she goes oh. yeah there it is. So now we've got um, a bigger screen to photograph. And in order to link all these things together, it's going to be done, it can be done either with um, this cable here, which is a USB uh, cable which connects directly to the MyReel for initially, initially setting it up. Um, but and the way that does is, what that actually does is it uses um, what's called a virtual Ethernet adapter, so it creates its own adapter uh, via the Ethernet. But once you've got that and you've set it up, what you really want to do is set it up for wireless, then you don't need the, this uh, cable anymore, which is I've actually done, but I'm going to show you some of the settings because it can be a little bit confusing. The first thing I've done is over here on the screen is I've got myself a um, Belkin N300 wireless router, it could be any wireless router really and what I'm going to do there is I'm going to click on it to see the settings and I'm going to um, look at the LAN settings Oops, there it is and you'll see that default IP address is 192.168.2.1 and the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and so what I'm going to I'm doing here is setting up an ad hoc network so I'm not using the university um, uh, wireless Wi-Fi at all because they, one of the things is they don't actually like you connecting instruments up to the Wi-Fi anyway but uh, it's less hassle really to do it this way so if you see the settings it's, it's, I've set it to DHCP um, dynamic host control protocol which means it's going to allocate the devices I'm using uh, those uh, in the pool here which is uh, anything from an IP address 192.168.2.2 up to 192.168.2.100 but because I'm only having two devices on this network this ad hoc network uh, it'll only allocate two unless somebody else joins it that is uh, so it's, it's going to allocate something and how it allocates that will it uh, seems to allocate it based on the MAC address so it will allocate the same IP every time so if you turn it off and on again hopefully uh, it will allocate the same IP and this is quite important from our point of view because you connect to the MyRio through the um, IP address uh, so it's discovered that way but over here I'm just going to move across slowly as I can there's my router just sitting in the corner of the room, flashing away, and if we go back, I'm going to now come out of the land settings, 
and we'll go at the wireless settings. Oh, where is it? Oh, there's a channel, and I've just set it up for Tom Tom's one because it's a sort of private network, and uh, put a password in it, security, and so on. And that's the setup of the um, the router. Then what I can do is I can connect to it, which I've already done. There it is. Oops, Tom's one. It says limited on it. That's okay. That just means it's not connected to the internet because I don't need internet here. I could still connect it to the internet as well through a gateway, but I don't want to do that. There's my net there. And I just log in in the usual way using my password that I've assigned to it. Now, the other thing I need to do is I need to uh, set up my Rio and I've got a program here which I've covered in another video and it's just a FFT um, signal sort of analysis type thing. All it does is it takes the FFT of a signal and um, gives that information to the processor which displays it on the screen and including the time domain signal as well. I don't know if you can see in here there's FIFO's um, memory and there's the actual thing itself, there's the program I won't go into details what the program does, you can see that in another video or you can download the program from National Instruments and there it is, what I'm doing now is going to look at the settings and what I'd normally do is I'd uh, have to find out what IP address has been assigned to um, my Rio and the way I do that is I go into um, the NI Max which is down here and that's measurement explorer and if I go to remote systems on there oops, and you should see my Rio there, my Tom's Rio and it's all should be set up go to uh, network settings There it is. It does actually work this time. And it's connected also to Tom's Tom1 uh, DHCP, so it's dynamically being assigned. And you can see that the router has assigned 192.168.2.5, which is fine. So um, that is, will be, hopefully, uh, the IP address of my um, device, of my, my Rio. Of course, I could set that manually to something else and just fix it, but uh, it's just as easy to do it dynamically. And so that so, it, so it's done its own settings there. So that's the my Rio setup. All I need to do now is uh, run the program. So here's the program here. Oops. Just uh, I'll actually I can I can run that's the FPGA program. I'll just run the main program. Here it is. And uh, at the moment, it's um, not running because I haven't. It's got a trigger mechanism on it, so I'm not um, triggered it. I'll have to move it across a little bit so I can see. There's the trigger. Run it again. And uh, trigger it. Oh, I know why it's not. Sorry, it's not running because I haven't connected it. That's a that's a more reason. So what I'll do now is I'll connect the um, my reel. So sitting here with a wire unconnected. So I'll connect the signal generator to it. Um, function generator here and I'm sampling here at uh, 26 kilohertz let's see if that works ah oh, there we go so now I'll put it on the big screen so you can see it now we've got a square wave I'll just adjust the frequency you can see all the harmonics the usual sort of things that you'd see on a Odd harmonics. Okay, um, put it on a sine wave. 
there's a spectrum at the top, time domain, time domain waveform at the bottom, frequency going up, frequency going down. Now, the big screen, as I said earlier, uses push to TV. Push to TV. That's just for convenience. So in reality, I can um, disconnect everything here and take my take my um, small computer away. And there I have wireless transmission of the data. So I'm now transmitting the data wirelessly to this um, Surface Pro as you can see which is in my hand so that is coming from the the Rio device down there wirelessly and then that in turn is being pushed to TV using the uh, push to TV uh, function of Windows 8.1 you also need another little piece of hardware which you plug in the back of your TV or your screen rather so there it is um, make up your own ad hoc network um, get your signal, transmit it to your laptop or to your tablet device and at the same time you can view it on a big screen as well if you so wish totally portable. Thank you very much. That's it.